Double J. And it's great to be with you and we're in for a treat today because Mazzy Star are in Australia and they're here for their very first Australian tour and performing three shows, well two more actually, at the Sydney Opera House. David Roebuck and Hope Sandoval will be joining me on the program today. On Double J, that's Flowers in December from Mazzy Star and Among My Swan back in 1996. And it was, in fact, the song that kicked off the performance last night that Mazzy Star gave at the Sydney Opera House on their very first Australian tour. And I want to say a big warm welcome to Dave Roback and Hope Sandoval of Mazzy Star who have joined me today. Hello. Hi. Hello there. How's it feeling? I mean, today, uh, well, it's very exciting this week because, of course, this is your very first Australian tour. You made us wait a very long time. Was there a reason for that? Uh, well, I was here a few years ago, but yes. yeah, I guess Mazzy Stars never played here. Yeah. David, but have you ever visited Australia? No, I haven't, and I'm really enjoying being here now. Yeah, great. So last night at the Opera House, it was a beautiful show, and I wanted to know how you guys felt about it. Were there any pre-show nerves? I was very nervous, Were but you? I'm always nervous. So, but yeah, it it it, it was it was a really nice uh, vibe in the audience, but we get pretty nervous. The live shows. Even after all this time? Yeah. What what techniques do you have, Hope, to uh, to, to get ready to get out on stage? Uh, you know, a couple glasses of wine. <laughs> it always helps anybody. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, well, it was a very beautiful show last night. What makes a good show for Mazzy Star when you walk off stage? Did you feel like that at the end of the night? Well, I think that we had... Uh, it, it was the first time we ever performed in Australia, so it was very exciting for us. And I think that uh, the Opera House is it's very, it's different to play in front of a, a, an audience that's sitting down in, in a theatre like that, or a concert hall. It's mm. different from playing in a, a nightclub or a, it just has a different vibe to it, but it was, it was cool. Yeah, there's beautiful acoustics in the, that room at the Opera House and let alone the uh, incredible lighting that's just happening outside as part of uh, Vivid Festival. It's great to have you here with a new EP in hand, the Still EP. Can you tell us a little bit about these songs, the four songs um, on it? Are any of them brand new? They're, they're all... We, we've never released any of them before. We, we, we released a, v- a different version of the song, So Tonight That I Might See. Mm-hmm. But this is a different version that we've re- released now, um, a different interpretation of the song. It's, we call it the Ascension version. Mm-hmm. And uh, the other songs, although we've we've played them before occasionally, we've, we've never really um, released them until just now. And so yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's all very much of a mixture of... the things we've been working on for a while and some things that are very new to us. Mm. You did, of course, um, release your first album in 17 years, Seasons of the Day, in 2015. Do you guys stay in touch uh, creatively and do you collaborate um, when Mazzy Star aren't active? Yeah, we collaborate all the time. Do you? We see each other a lot and get together, exchange ideas, play. (laughs) <laughs> How does that happen? Do you just sit, sit around doodling? <laughs> <laughs> well, we've been, we've been working in different studios we, in, in London and in, in California, in Norway. We were spending a lot of time together. And um, we, when we hang out, we just we inevitably end up recording and writing. Mm. How does the way you record compare to the way that we hear you live? Well, a lot, a lot of our recordings are actually very live. We, we, we like that. We don't um, really, it's not really our way, our approach is not to, you know, it's really to capture something about the moment rather than chasing a kind of idea of perfection. And, and so we just, we, we like to have that spontaneity in what we do. And do you feel like you can have that on stage as well? Sometimes. Mm. How did that work out for you last night? Like in what particular songs were you able oh, well, to, like, to, to do that? 
like I said, I mean, I was very, very nervous. So. Were you? <laughs> My legs were shaking. Ah, uh, well, you were, you're actually hard to see, Hope. <laughs> yeah. Even from where I was standing, you were you were just a silhouette. <laughs> yeah. I prefer it that way. I could see your hand moving as you gently played the tambourine. <laughs> But you looked very still. and You actually looked very composed, I thought. I didn't see any shaky knees. <laughs> yeah, I'm just, I'm, I'm too afraid to make a move. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, though, because those nerves don't affect your voice. Um, sometimes it does. Uh, you know, sometimes it sounds sort of shaky. So. Yeah. Hope you've talked about being nervous for a long time on stage and how difficult that is for you but how do you reconcile that with the urge to to be an artist and to to make music well i mean it is nerve-wracking and it it's it can be really really difficult but it also can be a beautiful experience you know it's it's um can be magical mm. And those are, that's when it really it just comes together and it's really special and I think that's why I do it. Um, that's the good side of it. Mm. Do you ever have shows where you feel like it's gone belly up? <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> and how do you deal with that? Uh, you know, just get on with it. Have another yeah. glass of wine. Exactly. <laughs> or three. <laughs> As you star with me in the Double J studios, let's go back to their first album, She Hangs Brightly. This is Hala on Double J. Well, I think I see another side, maybe. I'm talking with Dave Roback and... Hope Sandoval from Mazzy Star, who are in Australia for their very first tour, which is so exciting after, well, over 30 years together. Um, and it was really great last night to hear a number of songs from your first album together, She Hangs Brightly. How do you, what's your relationship to those songs these days? Like, how have you kept them fresh for you over the years? Well, you know, we 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 play the songs that we like. We don't really, you know, categorize them and discriminate against uh, ones from a different era. They're all just what we are into now mm. and what we enjoy playing. Mm. But have you found new things to sort of discover about those songs as the years have gone by? Do they reveal themselves in different ways at all? Well, like I mentioned, the song "So Tonight" that I might see, and we, I think that song has an improvisational element to it it's it's a bit um so like a uh, an action painting maybe something like that you would have seen the abstract expressionists do in the 1950s every single time it's different yeah i wanted to ask you both about when you first met because i know hope you were very young um 15 is that right i, I think so <laughs> what sort of teenager were you uh I probably a sort of bad teenager <laughs> <laughs> and, and all teenagers a little bit troubled <laughs> she was incredibly talented and uh, she was writing music at, and it was absolutely mind-blowing yeah. to me. tell me a bit about that David the first time you heard Hope sing well Hope uh, we went into a recording studio Hope and her partner, Sylvia Gomez, uh, they had a band called Going Home, and I thought they were so amazing. I just said, we've got to go into a studio. And so we went into a studio in, in Venice, California, and uh, a place called Radio Tokyo, and we recorded uh, all sorts of interesting... Th I mean, they performed, I was, I was producing, um, but it was amazing, and it was very inspiring, and that eventually led to us working together mm. I have a compilation album from back then called the Radio Tokyo Tapes which had a lot of the bands from the I guess the Los Angeles scene around that time would that be right well there was there, there's always been a lot of interesting underground music in, in, in Los Angeles like there was I'm sure there is the same thing here um, and uh, that was yeah, I, I remember that record 
Yeah, rain and, parades uh, on it. We worked with, uh, there was a really a f- amazing engineer there, a guy named Ethan James. Mm. Um, and it was a little old house in Venice, and it was a very charming place to work. So that's where we started to record. Mm. What I remember listening to music in the mid-80s and some of that, that scene that, that the Rain Parade were a part of, as, as was known, the Paisley Underground, but you know other groups, the Long Riders, the Dream Syndicate um, and you know various others, was just how different it was from a lot of music that was getting a lot of noise outside of California, i.e. hardcore and punk. Um, what was it like for, for you to be playing you know, in that kind of environment that seems so different, like those worlds seem so different that, that, um, that Mazzy Star came out of? Well, there was a very, it was a lot of, uh, I, I guess I'd just call it underground music, and uh, there were some very interesting, very talented artists, uh, other bands, a band called Green on Red that was absolutely mind-blowing. And um, among, you know, I, could, I don't want to just mention one because there were really quite a few interesting artists and um, people just doing their own thing and exploring their own direction. I, I don't really, um, it's, it, it was just a music scene, a lot of underground music. Mm. One of the albums that I really love from the um, late 80s Los Angeles scene was the band that preceded Mazzy Star. Uh, Opal, I've got the Fell From The Sun EP, which is my first um, connection really to it, I suppose, with Kendra Smith on vocals. And then Happy Nightmare Baby, which to me was um, such an amazingly deep and um, psychedelic uh, celebration of guitars, that album. Do you ever play songs from Happy Nightmare Baby or revisit that material? Well, you know, Kendra was incredibly talented, you know, is an incredibly talented person. And uh, we, her and I, I hope we were all friends back in those days. And uh, I, I think that we don't, Massey Star went in its own direction, uh, but uh, certainly Kendra is one of the most amazing musicians that I've ever known. David Roback in for Psychedelic Flight on guitar with Opal and their song Supernova. You're with Karen Lang on Double J, joined by David Roback and Hope Sandoval of Mazzy Star, but that predates Mazzy Star. Opal were a band that David Roback formed with Kendra Smith, who had been the drummer in the Dream Syndicate, but she stepped up to the mic with Opal and Keith Mitchell on drums, and they made a really amazing album called Happy Nightmare Baby in 1987, which is full of that kind of uh, very hypnotic, sludgy, druggy uh, psychedelia, and is well worth investigating if you are a Mazzy Star fan and want to know a little bit more about their roots. But what kind of music was informing your guitar playing in the mid-1980s, David? Well, I liked a lot of different guitarists, um, and uh, but uh, so I didn't. I never really had any one particular influence. Just if I if I liked something, I, I liked it. Yeah, but was there was there a band that say that you had the biggest impact on you when you were a teenager that you would return to time and time again? Well, I mean, there were certain people that there were more than there was more than one. I mean, for example, Bert Yanch was a. Mm-hmm. I, I really uh, admired him his guitar playing and uh i was very happy eventually to get to know him and to work with him and he was an, an absolutely amazing mm. guitar player an amazing person an amazing songwriter just he, he, hugely uh he, this is just an absolutely lovely man well you were lucky enough to get to work with him weren't you in mazzy star yes we we did and it was really a great experience yeah. Hope, what about you? Uh, were there any singers that were in, that you loved to listen to when you were a teenager? Yeah, I mean, loads of singers. Um, but I think the one that had the biggest influence on me, and I still try to imitate her style of singing, um, is Ixine Cervanka from X. Mm. Just think she has an amazing voice and 
the way she bends her notes. Yes. And she was a big influence on me. Yeah, well, she was a big influence on a lot of women in, uh, in that period, wasn't she? Yeah. For her style. Yeah, she's great. Yeah. I mean, I've never met her, but she is just a really cool, interesting woman. So you met and you recorded together. Did you feel immediately like you had, well, that you were sort of kindred spirits, that you had a, a, conne- a connection, a chemistry? It, me and David? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean... I mean, it can be hard to find that, can't it? It's not, it's not every day that you, you come across another musician that you can lock in so closely with. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we don't even... Half the time, we don't even really need to speak to each other. You know, we use telepathy. <laughs> we, we just know what each other is thinking. Did you use telepathy last night or did you have a song list? I was I was too nervous to use the telepathy. But <laughs> <laughs> Maybe tonight. The song list last night transformed during the concert. <laughs> did it? Yes, it did. Yeah. Yeah. How so? <sighs> we will... We just uh, spontaneously went in different directions and that we had planned. But, uh. <laughs> uh, the band that you have with you on this tour is, is is glorious. Can you tell us who's playing with you? Are they are, have you been playing with them for a while? Well, S- Suki has uh, been part of the band for for the entire time we've been playing. Mazzy Star, and so she's playing keyboards and some guitar and. We have uh, Paul Mitchell was playing violin, and uh, Derek James was playing drums, and we had uh, Paul Ogine was playing bass. He's fantastic, and they're all very talented. And Josh was playing. Josh Yenny was playing pedal steel on a few songs. And, mm. Yeah, the pedal steel was gorgeous. Yeah, they're all from California, and we we've known them all for quite some time. Mm. They're very cool people. I wanted to uh, extend my sympathies to you both for the passing of Keith Mitchell last year. I paid tribute to him on my show because I don't think drummers get enough props and he was seemed to be such a core part of, of Mazzy Star from the very start. How do you remember him as a drummer with, and his contribution to the band? Well, Keith was uh, phenomenally talented drummer and a very creative person a very unique person absolutely uh, irreplaceable and uh, his uh, Paul Mitchell is his son who's playing violin mm, I wondered with mm. us now yeah it was it very difficult or different introducing a new drummer like did it, did it change the way you played the songs much well you know uh, Derek uh, was a we went on tour with Derek when with Keith, and so the, he knew Keith, and he really liked Keith's playing. So uh, Keith was a big influence on him, and so it was really that was very nice that they had that connection, we, keeping that sort of in the family, so to speak. I'm talking with David Roebuck, and. Hope Sandoval from Mazzy Star in Australia for their first uh, Australian tour. Two shows still to go tonight and tomorrow night at the Sydney Opera House if you'd like to get along and soak up the the gorgeousness that they uh, gave us last night at the Sydney Opera House. You have such a special chemistry between you and uh, David, how do you go about writing with hope in mind? Are there any rules around songwriting for you with Mazzy Star? No, there's, there aren't any rules at all whatsoever. We just, uh, we, sometimes we, we write on guitars, sometimes we write on piano or electric organ or bass guitar, different things. It just uh, whatever happens, happens. I mean, how do you go through that process of, of selecting songs for albums? Do you normally have a lot of material and you're kind of honing them and trying to figure out how to make, I guess, an album that has coherency? Well, I, maybe uh, we, we'd like to make albums that are incoherent almost as much as we would like to make albums that are coherent. Yeah. I love that. <laughs> What's your most incoherent album? 
all the fun. <laughs> It was it was so great to have your new album, um, Seasons, in 2015, and it sort of came out of the blue, I guess, in a lot of ways. What did it feel like for you to be out and about touring again with those with those songs, and to feel that you had a new audience, but also the original Mazzy Star audience that you know had sort of grown up with with your music? Like, how, how did that make you feel? I remember. Uh being introduced to a child who was named Mazu, and I thought that was interesting. That s- told a little story to me. Yeah. Do people have Mazzy Star tattoos? Yes. <laughs> do they? <laughs> yes, they do. What do they look like? They look amazing. <laughs> yeah. What are they based on? Some of the album artwork? or? Uh, some of, I think some of them are just the name, and some of them are of me. <laughs> What about David? Have you got a Mazzy Star tattoo? No, I don't. <laughs> Maybe in my mind I do, but not. <laughs> How do you... <laughs> I know you've, you've said before that with each album it's about incoherency as much as coherency, but, um, you know, how do you, how do you challenge yourself with each album? I, I think that we, we don't really have a... a, a, a we don't really have a process that needs to be verbalized between the two of us. We just really basically do what we like and and that's been the way it's always been and what what uh, turns us on and what uh, what we what we feel emotionally con- and connected to. We, that's what we like to do. Mm. I wanted to play something from uh, an album that that uh, David you were a part of um, in the late 80s, The Rainy Day. Uh, album and my copy is so scratched from over wearing it I've, I can barely barely play it but could you just give us a little uh, picture of how that album came together with some of the players from the scene um, with Kendra Smith and there was Michael Coercio from Three O'Clock Susanna Hoffs from the Bangles was that a spontaneous kind of get into the studio and record some of your favourite songs kind of project? Yeah yeah that's really kind of what it was all about I- uh, I wanted to record some songs and and with with some of my friends some people i whose work i admired and um, we just uh spontaneously went into the studio and and uh started to record yeah do you ever listen back to that album i i still th- i still think that some of the music on that album is uh really special and um i Susanna is a very old fr- and dear friend of mine and uh, very talented. I want to play something from that album right now. This is uh, Rainy Day featuring Susanna Hoffs on vocals and you're going to know this song. I'm talking with David Roback and Hope Sandoval from Mazzy Star on Double J. Hope, you have recently, aside from your work with the Warm Inventions, um, over you continue to collaborate, don't you? Uh, it seems a consistent thing that you've done over the years, and I'm sure that you get many more offers for your voice than you're able to uh, accommodate. Do you have any in the wings that we need to look out for? Who have you been singing with? Um... I did something with um, Mercury Rev recently. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know when it's coming out, but that was the, I guess, the last thing I did. Yeah. I heard the song that you did with uh, the Psychic Ills on their album last year, too, which was really lovely. Yeah, that's a good one. What do you like about those collaborations? Do they push you as an artist in different directions? Sometimes. Yeah, you know, it's 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 always nice to be asked, you know. Yeah. Rather than not being asked. And what's happening with the warm inventions at the moment? Oh, nothing. Columns, I think My Bloody Valentine are um, going on tour soon, and Mazzy Star in Australia. I know. <laughs> hooray! Hooray for Mazzy Star in Australia. Are you touring a lot as Mazzy Star at present? Uh, no. No, we're doing these shows and, and we'll see what happens. Mm. 
Do you have plans? I mean, you see, you, you said you write a lot, you record a lot. At what point do you decide now is the time to, to put new material out? Yeah, we get asked that question from time to time, and we really have never, we never really have uh, identified what the process is. It just uh, happens. <laughs> As if by magic. <laughs> or telepathy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what are you most proud of with Mazzy Star? Probably um, the friendships that, that we have with the other musicians and that we've stayed friends for such a long time and we still have so much in common and we love playing music together. And it's pretty special. It is. And it's also very special for people who love your music. And it was obvious last night at the show... Um, just how much people felt. I mean, I certainly was a bit overwhelmed at times because your album, So Tonight That I Might See, got me through a very pa painful childbirth, <laughs> the, the birth of my first daughter. So it brought back lots of memories uh, for me for that. But you must get people all the time talking to you about how important your music is to them. Does, does anything sort of stand out for you? Any comments that people have made? I think the comment you just made will... We'll remember, yeah. and that will stand out to us. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I still listen to it without the pain, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. So have you got any other plans for your time here in Australia after you finish um, doing the, the shows? Well, yeah, there's so much to do here. Uh, we, we're going to just explore and, and uh, uh, see what happens. Yeah, so you're going to do a little travel? I think we're we're going to do. We haven't really planned it. There's some some time, and we're going to uh, just uh, we, we're open to suggestions. Feel, you know. We may not go home. <laughs> we may just stay here. We're loving it so much. That would be great. Just stay, <laughs> and then we'd have never have to wait for you to come back again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for your time today. It's really great to have you come in and chat to us about about the band and. Um, what song did you enjoy playing most last night? What what hit the nail on the head for you? Because we'll go out with that. Uh, for me, it was so tonight that I might see. Mm. It was so strange. So <laughs> it was so experimental last night. I think that was my favourite one. And it doesn't often go in that direction. Um, it does, but I don't think we've ever done that song where it's just me and Suki mm. for the first two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for your time today, David Roback and Hope Sandoval of Mazzy Star. Thank you. It's so good to have them in the country, isn't it? And such a pleasure to talk to them on today's show. It's gone fast. The show's over. <laughs> <laughs>